Why is it so hard for us to accept climate change? We've got 20 years of overwhelming scientific evidence now, and the majority of people accept that there is a major problem if they're asked if climate change is a problem. But if we go out and ask them, what are you concerned about? Almost nobody mentions climate change. Two thirds of people never talk about it at all, even with their closest family and friends. I've spent two years talking to the world's leading experts, cognitive psychology, social anthropology, many of the world's leading climate scientists, activists, campaigners of all kinds. Not just people campaigning for action on climate change, but people campaigning against action, because for them too, I've been fascinated by this question. What is it about climate change that makes it so hard for us to accept and to come to terms with what the scientists are telling us? Certainly climate change is inherently challenging for us. Our brains are geared to look for certain tags, certain signs that tell us whether things are dangerous to us and we need to pay attention to them or whether we can safely ignore them and push them aside. The things that we pay immediate attention to are things which are here, now. Things where there is a certainty of imminent threat, especially those that are caused by an identifiable enemy with the intention to cause us harm. And the problem is climate change has none of these qualities. Climate change appears to be in the future, uncertain, distant in both time and place. And possibly above all, it suffers from the fact that there is no clear enemy with the, with the intention to cause us harm. In fact, if anyone is responsible, it's ourselves. And that generates another level of anxiety and moral challenge for us that makes us want to push this issue even further away into the far distance and not to deal with it. Strangely, though, everybody I spoke to came up with a different answer to my questions. The cognitive psychologist said, ah, this is a perfect example of uh, the problems we have in um, risk evaluation, uh, the biases in our cognition. But then when I spoke to economists, they said, ah, this is a perfect example of a, a market failure. When I spoke to campaigners, both campaigners for action on climate change and campaigners against action on climate change, they said the same thing. They said, oh, it's all about corruption, it's all about political failure. What I came to realise was that actually, the main reason we ignore climate change is because it is shaped by the people telling the story. But to make sense of it, to deal with the fact that it does not contain the tags and the signals that we require to tell us that it's a threat, we put those in ourselves. We create stories and narratives around it that are shaped in our own image. That means that when we're speaking to people like ourselves, we make eminently good sense. But as soon as we speak outside our group, as soon as we try and speak to other people, it does not adequately convey the threat that we are dealing with. So if we are going to come to terms with climate change, if we are going to, to break this, this impasse, these partisan divides that make this issue so challenging, if we're going to open up this silence which makes it so hard for people to talk about it, we're going to have to find new ways of framing it, new narratives and stories to tell around it. Because climate change ultimately only has the shape we give it, and we can choose that shape. We can redefine it in new ways. Just as I argue that we are in some ways wired to ignore climate change, we have to remember that we have immense capacity to work together, immense capacity for empathy, cooperation, working productively for, for shared issues, for shared concerns and shared objectives. Recognising this, though, means that there is an opportunity for a positive outcome, but that opportunity depends on us understanding and recognising that maybe ultimately it is the things we have in common that are most important, not the things which push us apart. Thank you. I hope you enjoy my book.